Andrew, AI, uh, no conversation without covering AI, obviously. Uh, how do you differentiate uh, the Densify offering in terms of your AI capabilities? Because, you know, you, you go to any of the uh, large or small windows shows and everything has a ton of AI in it and a little bit of machine learning for good measure, but nobody really explains the business value or what it does. So, you know, how do you see this from a, from a Densify perspective? It's funny because I think everything is ML washed or AI washed. Now everything has it, even websites that host forums are machine learning now. But I, I think there are some, it's important to get it right. And nobody really, there's not really strong definitions out there. But when we describe what we do, we like to use the term machine learning because I think it implies a little more determinism. If, if you're actually applying these algorithms to figure out, you know, learn the patterns of workloads and use that to make decisions and drive automation, you kind of want it to be correct, not almost correct. And I think mm. some of these terms of connotations like, like natural language recognition, it, it can get it wrong. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think if you look at the different types of use cases, um, there's certain ones that are okay to be a bit wrong because it's very clever and it'll, you know, and maybe eventually get it right and ones that you want to be correct. So in our view, when we're controlling, uh, you know, uh, cloud infrastructure and, and driving efficiency, we kind of want the answers to be correct. And, and, and to mm -hmm. do that, there's a lot of predictive algorithms involved. Um, but it's a different kind of thing than natural speech recognition. That, that's kind of another area of AI or neural nets, which maybe converge or maybe don't. So, right. so I think I, we, we always use the word machine learning just because I think it's more suitable to the problem domain that we address. And that's a good point, a problem domain. And that's a scalability issue because you there's two types of vendors. There's the ones that do deep learning, magic algorithms, hook up your log files or your metrics, uh, streaming metrics, and then I'll give you, without any training, that you have to do basically uh, unsupervised learning. I give you trends, I give you metrics, I give you cool stuff, right? Uh, but they have a big problem in that they don't have the domain knowledge inside, so they can't tell you how to respond, right? They can say, look here, there is something that's not right, but yeah, I can't really say exactly what it is or what you need to do, but you had... No training. And then as the other guys, they uh, employ 50, 100 people who do nothing but learn, but uh, look at the latest UCS API definitions. And, you know, there's, there's a hundred, uh, not hundred, there's thousands of different softwares that you have to cover in, in that case. And that's not scalable. Where, where do you stand? Do you have a hundred people feeding in device specific information? Are you unsupervised? No, well, we're a combination of supervised and unsupervised so, uh -huh. so we do feed metadata but we don't that's not the, the, the biggest part it's more around the, the algorithms themselves the way they number crunch and learn things and, and you said an interesting word you said the word magic I, I think there's cases where magic is a negative word so it is when you're com up to coming to drive automation you have to be able to explain why and, and there's some mm -hmm. ways you can arrive at an answer that you can't explain why it just came out it just spit out an answer and that's that's not appropriate for a lot of it domains or, or areas where you're automating um you know what i mean it's, it's like if you have something that's driving your car and it decides if you're left but I can't tell you why when you crash. I think you want some things to be more deterministic. So, right. so we don't want there to be magic. I mean, we like to think of it as magic, but it should be able to explain the basis of the decision. And I think there's certain approaches where you can't do that. You just get an answer. Yeah. And, and again, we hear customers call it a black box. That's a black box. Yeah. It's telling me to do this. It won't say why. I can't do it. And yeah. so we, we take that very seriously. Yeah. Deep learning doesn't allow it. Reinforcement learning doesn't allow it. You get a probability 0.7% that what I'm saying is correct, but it's still 30% then in that case, uh, you know, that it's not correct and that you are chasing something that doesn't exist. And uh, the sad part is that a lot of the big vendors capitalize on, on this because though a lot of those startups have innovative ideas. And I think you guys are a little bit in between there, right? Obviously, you're not a startup and you have a lot of domain knowledge, and but you also have a lot of an idea of, of, of solving that scalability problem. I mean, can, can you can you go a little bit more into? Uh, you support a lot of. You know a lot about different devices. Again, take a take a Nutanix or a Cisco UCS or any any hyperconverged infrastructure. How much uh, information do you manually feed in to be able to get to a recommendation versus how much do you discover yourself and uh, how many people do you need to employ to you know to do that on a daily basis? Well, I mean, we we try to make it as automated as possible, of course. And again, like I said, like we'll feed metadata, so we're responsible for updating the catalogs and metadata when specs change or things change. So our customers don't have to do that. Um, mm -hmm. We even have advisors that work with our customers, so they don't we have to learn how the analytics work or how they they, they can do the care feeding of that and the policy tuning. So there's always a bit of policy tuning. You know, that how do you want your environment to operate, or is that production? And that will drive how we treat it and, and how we come up with the answers we do. But we try to make it for the most part very highly automated. I think key to all of this is that 
being able to articulate what you don't know or qualify the answer. So for example, in our cloud recommendations, we give an effort ranking. Um, and we mm -hmm. say that is a drop kick because you can just do it, but we're sure of it. This other thing takes a little more work because you'd have to change the AMI or you might have to change from classic to VPC. And we didn't even go so far as to say, we didn't see enough data to know, you know, to know 100% certainty, but this is highly likely a case. So if you can qualify your answers in saying how good they are, uh, how good they are and how easy they are, I think that's really, really important because, mm -hmm. you know, it, in fact, we strive for 100% uh, uh, you know, right. confidence, but, but sometimes you have to qualify and say, this could happen or this could be the case. And, and so our goal is to drive automation, but we, when we show the answers, we'll say what subset of our answers you should automate. Mm -hmm. And what other ones maybe give you very, very high benefit, but maybe need a human to look at it. And I think that's, you know, that's that balance that we strike because um, you can't know everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of vendors had big issues who just uh, sold the black box principle um, because uh, some, sometimes you can, cannot just afford to be to be wrong at all. So there is some domain knowledge to be done. And until we figure out how to explain how how to, how we make neural networks explain their decision process, which there is work on, right? But it's it's rudimentary. Um, that, that's, if you can do that, you're on to something, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish I could. All right. Uh, thank you, Andrew.